thank you, Seta. Uh, thank to organizers for getting us all together here and uh, for giving me privilege to start this uh, session and devote it to localization. Uh, the title of my talk is anybody de-localization and uh, the parentheses mean that I'm still not sure what is more exciting. Delocalization, many body settings, or localization, many body localization. So I will, um, the first speaker of this se session, I will uh, <coughs> uh, spend much time on the background to introduce the notions from the field. And then I uh, briefly flash some of our results uh, uh, obtained in the works um, uh, with uh <coughs> people listed as collaborators here. Okay, so this is the outline of my talk, and this is the main section. Um, and, uh, I will discuss uh, um, many body localization and delocalization and uh, emphasize the connection between many body setting and non interacting Anderson localization, uh, and also discuss various mechanisms of many body delocalization, uh, uh, <coughs> which are listed uh, here. So I will discuss enhancement of many body delocalization by spectral diffusion and delocalization by power law interactions. Uh, I will very briefly uh, tell you about the absence of many body localization in continuous model. And uh, if time permits, I'll show you uh, some recent results on many uh, localization transition, localization, delocalization transition in long spin chains. Okay, so I think this is, this is the main slide. So this is the main idea uh, coming from this seminal work by Alt Schuller, Gehen, Kamenev, and Levitov in 1991. So the idea is that uh, the properties of random interacting system. Here it's uh, a system of fermions uh, in random potential. Epsilon A is random quantity. Interacting with each other can be mapped to non-interacting localization problem for hopping over certain graph in Fox space. So I think this is the basic idea and all, all the developments in the field of many body localization um, can be cast into the form uh, of Anderson localization on a certain graph. So how it works, uh, consider uh, basic basis states, which are just Slater determinants for fermions, uh, as nodes in Fox space. And then the interaction term just couples those nodes. Yeah? So for example, here, uh, you have uh, <coughs> n minus one excitation above the Fermi C, and then applying yeah uh, uh, then applying the creation operator you create n excitations and then applying this operator you just change this you couple this state one to states from this generation generation two and so on so this way uh, all basics are coupled in Fox space by interaction, uh, forming a certain graph. And the main question then is this, uh, to, uh, to, <coughs> to study uh, the structure of this graph. And it turns out that uh, uh, the graphs uh, in many body setting are very uh, resembling to what's known as random regular graphs. So it, uh, they have uh, much in common with random regular graphs, and Konstantin uh, Tikhonov uh, will discuss uh, random re regular graphs and localization properties there today, uh, later today. So, um, uh, one can reformulate the question of many body localization in the interacting problem. Uh <coughs> graph and transition on the graph in Fox space corresponds to many body localization delocalization transition so 
<coughs> one should study the emergent structures in Fock space. So study uh, localization, delocalization, many body localization, delocalization transition. Okay, so uh, what is many body localization? So <coughs> in, in, in the context of statistical physics, we uh, can think about thermalization in an isolated, no coupling to thermal bath, uh, system is interacting, and so we have electrons, or atoms, or spins interacting with each other, disordered, so we're uh, subject to static random fields, or uh, characterized by random hopping amplitudes, uh, and cited system. So it's not about ground state properties, it's about many body localization is about uh, excited states, so non with non-zero energy density above the uh, ground state. So, <coughs> uh, and then the main question uh, is about thermalization. So I will explain in more detail uh, how to formalize it. Uh, so it's about uh, whether local observables are thermal or not. And it turns out that there are systems uh, which show up so-called many-body localized state of matter, which is characterized by no thermalization. And uh, for instance, uh, this uh, very popular system, random field Heisenberg spin chain, which shows the properties of many-body local, uh, localized state. Uh, and again, uh, the, the state corresponds to uh, an Anderson localized state on a certain graph in Fox space. Okay, so what about uh, thermalization? So if we have an isolated uh, system, uh, the density matrix is governed by, yeah, it, uh, it shows unitary evolution governed by the Hamiltonian. So if we start with the pure of the whole system, this pure state uh, remains pure forever. However, we can consider a subsystem of the whole system and uh, analyze evolution of the, uh, the time evolution of the density matrix of the subsystem. Uh, so, which, which, uh, so this density matrix is defined by tracing out uh, all degrees of freedom out of subsystem A. And then uh, thermalization would mean that uh, this density matrix would evolve to some equilibrium value prescribed by Gibbs distribution according to this formula. Although the system is characterized by unitary involution. So if we uh, consider a subsystem that it may look thermalized. And uh, this, uh, this important statement of eigenstate thermalization hypothesis. If we take uh, an arbitrary state composed of eigenstates around some energy E, the expectation value of an observable would ultimately evolve to its microcanonical average value corresponding to this energy. And the expectation value in a in a large many-body system, expectation value of this observable, of the operator corresponding to this observable, given many-body eigen, uh, is close, up to exponential corrections, to the microcanonical expectation, uh, to the mic microcanonical average value. Mm -hmm. Yes, in this sense, the other subsystem acts as a heat bath. And in the MBL system, uh, the other subsystem stops being a thermal bath for, for the subsystem. So, <coughs> uh, and in MBL system, systems, this eigenstate uh, thermalization hypothesis, ETH, uh, is not valid. Uh, 
one of the uh, most uh, popular indicator uh, is the en entanglement entropy. So this is Neumann entanglement entropy defined uh, this way with uh, the density matrix of subsystem A. Uh, so yeah, so MBL is many body localization. Yeah, so I should have here the, defini the abbreviation, sorry. Uh, so, and ETH is eigenstate thermalization hypothesis. So this is all uh, related to, to two talks uh, yesterday, the two last talks yesterday. Uh, okay, so uh, this is a very important indicator, uh, <coughs> distinguishing between the ETH and MBL uh, s phases or states, namely the entanglement entropy uh, of, the subs uh, of the subsystem scales, yeah, scales, of the system. Hmm? Huh? Well, let's let's consider let's consider just subsystem which is more or less half of the system. Yeah? So then then there is only one scale L. Yeah. Then uh, then the entanglement entropy scales as a uh, <coughs> according to the volume law in the thermalized case, and according to the area law or the area of the surface uh, separating the subsystems. Uh, in the many body local states, which uh, can be interpreted in terms of lack of ergodicity. So the two systems, uh, two systems hardly talk to each other in this case. So the many body localized system uh, stops being a thermal bath for, for itself. Uh, it indefinitely preserves memory. Yeah? Uh, this one or this? Ah, yes, yes. Okay, uh, I think mathematically speaking it's, oh well, uh, I think it's for typical subsystem. Uh, so some subsystems can look uh, thermalized. Uh, yeah, and and uh, and that's typical. That's typical in the system. Uh, if the system is many body localized, uh, so it's believed. It's believed that there is a transition upon uh, changing some parameters. Uh, at the transition point, uh, the system looks more like localized. And uh, this is this is a general property of. Uh, uh, complex uh, graphs, localization on complex graphs, and this this uh, problem is very very similar to to those, uh, as as Konstantin Tikhonov will, will discuss. Okay, and uh, uh, what 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 this lack of ergodicity or thermalization means formally? Uh, system is characterized by an extensive number of local integrals of motion. Uh, so the number of uh, integrals of motion scales with the system size uh, extensively. Yeah, so just basically proportional to the, to the system size. And this is a very important uh, ingredient in mathematical discussion uh, of many body localization, in particular uh, in the <coughs> uh, well, it's not rigorous theorem, but uh, well, theorem by Imbri, who uh, showed uh, that in certain uh, spin chain model, one-dimensional chain model, uh, there is indeed many body localization under certain again, under certain conditions. Uh, and this is an important ingredient of this uh, proof. Uh, so this, uh, those local integrals of motion will be discussed in more detail in the talk by Ivan Protopopov uh, later today. Local means that, yes. Uh, so uh, <coughs> uh, if you consider 
for example, interacting spins uh, in random, random interacting spin chain, then you can uh, transform your spin operators by unitary transformation such that you, uh, the resulting, uh, and this transformation would be local. Uh, and uh, those spins would be transformed to new objects which would commute with the Hamiltonian and with each other, uh, such that there are local uh, integrals of motion and uh, the content uh, of uh, those objects would be space. So they would be presented uh, uh, as a kind of superposition of uh, spins uh, with the weight which is concentrated at around this point, around site I. Yeah, so this, uh, this would include spins neighboring to this site I. In this sense, uh, they are local, but more detail in, in, in the talk by Ivan Prokopopov. Uh, 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 okay, so uh, this many body localization is about uh, random systems that are not uh, straightforwardly <laughs> Hmm? Without randomness, uh, yeah. So people, people, yeah, people discuss adding randomness to integrable and non-integrable systems. Yeah. So for example, uh, you can add randomness, random magnetic field, to just uh, one-dimensional Heisenberg model, yeah? and get this uh, many-body localization, delocalization transition there. Um, and. Uh, uh, transport of conserved quantities inside the many body localized system is blocked. Yeah? So it's <coughs> if the system is many body localized, so no, not thermalized, uh, not ergodic, then energy and particle transport is blocked. And this was actually uh, the original motivation for studying those problems, namely um, the original question was uh, what is the temperature dependence of the electrical and thermal conductivity in a random system decoupled from the external world uh, uh, with and uh, the answers to these questions uh, oscillate widely with time. So this is the first answer. Of phonons in the absence of the external world, the conductivity is zero at any temperature. So, this was the answer uh, by Anderson for the problem without interaction, but already in that uh, paper, in the first on Anderson localization, uh, effects of interactions were discussed. Hmm? Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, so, if, yeah, yeah, in in, in a system, uh, I, I consider here systems where with randomness you have uh, localization, single particle localization, so dimension one and two. I'm, I, I, I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, this slides. Yes, sure. Yeah, so then um, Fleischmann and Anderson in A uh, uh, conjectured that in the presence of interaction, nothing would happen. Uh, so conductivity would remain zero, right? so the system would be localized uh, in the presence of interaction uh, uh, in a system where a single particle stays localized. On the other hand, uh, approximately the same time, uh, the high temperature behavior of the conductivity uh, was discussed in terms of uh, dephasing of weak localization by Alshuler, Aronov, and Khmelnytsky. And they found finite conductivity at sufficiently high temperatures. Yeah? So this already seems contradictory to, to, to this aspect. Uh, then in 2005, those two statements were reconciled and uh, a transition, finite temperature transition uh, for the conductivity was discussed in those two works uh, <coughs> at critical temperature separating uh, 
delocalized and localized or insulating and metallic phases. Yeah. So it looks like the, the activity is a nice kind of order parameter for this transition. Yeah. So uh, critical temperature is determined by the interaction strength alpha and the level spacing of single particle uh, localized states in the system. Uh, <coughs> and um, uh, we uh, obtained by, m by mapping uh, this problem onto a uh, non interacting problem uh, in Fox space, uh, uh, conjecturing that uh, it's the, the graph is just better lattice, we uh, found the critical behavior here at the transition for the. Hmm? So, alpha is the uh, dimensional strength of the interaction between. Uh, yes, so it's. Uh, uh, so, so, uh, and the critical behavior here was conjectured to be the same as uh, for the beta lattice. Okay, and uh, experimentally, uh, signatures of such behavior were uh, reported. For example, this is an evidence for finite temperature insulator in thin superconducting films in the proximity to superconducting insulator transition. So, this is uh, <coughs> work by Shahar group. And here you, you can see the trace of the conductivity as a function of temperature, which apparently goes to zero at finite temperature. So this was interpreted as uh, an evidence of this many body localization transition at finite temperature, uh, displayed in the conductivity, in the transport properties of the system. Um, so the dashed line is the fit uh, uh, corresponding to, yeah, so some, some, some fit corresponding to the critical behavior uh, near the transition uh, from the field. Okay. And this is another realization, experimental realization of a system which might display many body uh, localization, delocalization transition. Uh, so this is a system of uh, called interacting fermions in quasi-random optical lattice. So here the disorder is not truly random, it's quasi-periodic uh, chain. Uh, uh, so the initial, the initial state is this, so every second site is popular. And then uh, the system uh, evolves in time and uh, an imbalance, yeah, so this anti-ferromagnetic order <laughs> Uh, is measured, and yeah, so the, 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 the particles can hop from side to side with hopping amplitude uh, J, and they interact with interaction U, and this uh, result, so delta is uh, the <coughs> spread of disorder. Uh, so this is, uh, in the absence of disorder, the imbalance decays to zero, so everything gets uh, mixed, uh, however, um, uh, at strong disorder, uh, imbalance stays constant, and there is a de uh, non-trivial dependence on the interaction strength here, which tells us that this is not just Anderson localization, and uh, those results can be interpreted again in terms of many-body localization, delocalization transition, meaning that for uh <coughs> Uh, sufficiently strong interaction, the imbalance while uh, without interaction in Anderson insulator, the imbalance would stay constant forever because the system is localized uh, in terms of Anderson. Uh, yes, they can control everything, this very flexible system. Okay, and this, uh, I think uh, now in all talks devoted to many body localization, uh, you can see this plot from this by Lewis, La Florence, and Alet. Uh, so this is the phase diagram in energy density and disorder axis uh, <coughs> for the uh, XXZ model. Yeah. So this is kind of this is similar to Heisenberg mo model in, in random magnetic field, but with couplings X and Y and Z uh, different. Uh, 
So you can see the ergodic phase and MBL phase. Uh, so this phase diagram is obtained by exact diagonalization of uh, disorders spin chain with the system size up to 22. And uh, this phase boundary uh, corresponds to various indicators of the transition, like the behavior of entanglement entropy and the behavior of level statistics uh, of many body uh, eigen, uh <coughs> eigen states and so on. So there are various indicators and all of them uh, give this uh, phase boundary. Uh, however, yeah, and, and, and in this particular model, the uh, disorder strengths corresponding to the transition in the middle of the band uh, at energy one, one half, energy density one half, is close to four. Yeah, it's between three and four. But this is a finite system. Uh, so let's, let's see. Yeah. So uh, with finite system of this size, we cannot, we cannot say. Yeah? Uh, and it turns out that uh, finite size thing is very non-trivial here. Namely, uh, so this is one of the m most important, uh, or mo again, most popular indicators of the transition. <coughs> uh, namely, uh, the adjacent gap ratio in the level statistics. So these two limiting values correspond to Gaussian orthogonal ensemble yeah, for many body levels and uh, Poisson statistics. Yeah, so Wigner Dyson and Poisson. This is delocalized, this is localized. Yeah, and you see that with, with changing the system size from 12 to 22, the crossing point close to the right. To yeah, so it was here and, and, and close, close to the right. And uh, this was the critical value obtained from the crossing point for the larger system size. Hmm? Okay, so uh, you see uh, those curves, yeah, so the th uh, those three curves, they intersect somewhere here, right? Now, if you can, <coughs> uh, yes. So Yes, 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 to the localized. And, 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 and the crossing point would also move down, downwards yeah, to the localized value. Yeah? So <coughs> uh, this means, yeah, so uh, it turns out that uh, uh, the results for such system size are not quite conclusive. And one one has to one has to consider much larger system size, so sizes to see the trends. Uh, and this this phenomenon of, of 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 the flowing of the moving the crossing point is again uh, reminiscent of what is observed in random regular graphs, where the where <coughs> uh, the properties of the localization transition are known analytically. Uh, in particular, the position of the transition is known. And this was, uh, uh, this will be discussed again by, by, by Constantine Kitchen later today. Uh, so it turns out that random regular graphs uh, can be considered as very nice toy model for, <coughs> for the many body localization transition. Okay, uh, returning to the conductivity. So uh, in 2015, uh, a couple of papers <coughs> appeared that found that the conductivity even in the metallic part of this, or ergodic part of this phase diagram uh, is subjective. Namely, it's characterized by some index alpha as a function, of conductivity as a function of frequency is characterized by some <coughs> alpha and at zero frequency it's zero. So this is typical for subdiffusion. <coughs> then uh, an, e an immediate question uh, arises whether this diffusion is <coughs> an ergodic so subspace or a transient phenomenon. And I think uh, uh, 
in his talk today, uh, Ferdinand Evers would discuss this question. Uh, so just in the next talk. Uh, so what uh, what uh, people saw? So again, so this is uh, this axis is disorder. So this is the border, apparent border in ergodic and non-ergodic phases. Uh, so this is many body localized for not very large systems. <coughs> it was found to be close to three in agreement with the previous plot. And now uh, this uh, this alpha is uh, is a, is this power law exponent in the dynamical conductivity, <coughs> and you see that in, <coughs> in those papers uh, a, a large uh, sub uh, a large region of range of disorder was found where this alpha is non-zero, okay. implying that the DC conductivity is zero here is exactly zero here uh, while the system is ergodic. So conductivity is no longer an indicator of the transition. So uh, <coughs> many body localization, uh, the also thermalization transition is not equivalent to a metal insulator transition in contrast to original expectation. Okay, so again, uh, this is, this is what what we saw in the previous plot. So in the non-ergodic phase, the conductivity is zero. In ergodic or part of ergodic phase, the conductivity is zero. Maybe at, at higher temperatures, so there will be truly uh, metallic ergodic phase. But this is, <coughs> this, this picture reminds, very much reminds of the first picture followed by Anderson and Anderson and Flash. Moreover, yeah, so recently <coughs> people claimed that in two dimensions there is no many body localization whatsoever, whatsoever because of so called avalanches. Only rare events uh, corresponding to spots of weak disorder would be locally thermalized, yeah, would be seen as thermalized, as ergodic. And they would drive at any temperature delocalization of all the rest in two dimensions. Within this scenario, the conductivity is still believed to be subdiffused. Then we have very interesting plot where we have every f everywhere for all temperatures we have ergodicity, but the conductivity is everywhere zero. This DC conductivity is zero. So we have in ergodic insulator in this sense. But this is, uh, this is just, just, just a conjecture, I would say. So it's not commonly accepted, this picture. Okay. okay. So it would, be, it would be here, but uh, it would be here, but uh, according to this picture, uh, when you go to larger system sizes and so on, it would it would be destroyed. This this picture. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, in principle, yes. But again, this is this, this is not well established. So so uh, <coughs> uh, it might happen that uh, you would need an infinitesimal uh, coupling to the external world to <coughs> to have to have true DC conduct to, to have fine yeah hmm? oh. Oh. Uh, okay oh. uh -huh. okay uh, uh, I think I think I think uh, uh, well uh, I think in uh, work by Huminius and uh, by, by Huminia and the rock there is there is a uh, discussion of this possibility so uh, okay I, I just wanted to I, I, I just wanted to show this as an extreme example of what can be no 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 I don't I, I, I don't I don't I didn't say that this is what most people believe in 
so this is this is this is just one of the possibilities, and uh, uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't think it's. Uh, but as any anything in this uh, area, um, uh, we cannot be we cannot be 100 percent sure. Uh, in uh, yeah, so so there it, uh, the dimensionality only depends the uh, the power the power of temperature in the in the conductivity uh, in the conductivity and <coughs> uh, it would be it would be for one and two uh, so this picture would be would be universal for one and two dimensions within this picture and. It's only this power uh, is the is the de temperature dependence of the conductivity where it's finite. Uh, de uh, it depends on, on on dimensionality. Okay, so uh, yeah, so 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 uh, returning uh, to one-dimensional systems. Uh, so this is the cartoon of the idea uh, of avalanches. So again, this is disorder exists uh, for low disorder. The system is mainly ergodic, red, with cold spots uh, corresponding to stronger disorder and uh, weaker thermalization. Uh, and uh, this uh, <coughs> state is characterized by subdiffusion because of Griffith's phenomena, uh, according to, to, to this picture. Then there is a naive, kind of naive uh, transition point. Uh, According to the simplest estimates, uh, uh, the localization delocalization transition would occur, and this corresponds to the uh, estimate based on the comparison of uh, interaction matrix element and uh, the corresponding level spacing. Uh, but uh, <coughs> for even for stronger disorder, according to this avalanche picture, there is no true many body localization because there are regions where disorder is weak. And those regions are locally thermalized, and they would derive at longer times, at long times, uh, avalanches of uh, thermalization. Uh, th this is uh, this is in, in D equal one, and then there is MBL phase, and uh, the conjecture is that the conjecture of those people is that uh, in D equal two, this the WC would go to infinity, and what remained, what would remain, is this non-true MBL phase. Yeah, but in one D, they, they see the, from from their uh, consideration, they find uh, the true many-body localization, delocalization transition at stronger disorder. Okay, so uh, I, I would not show uh, more details on that, uh, and. Uh, <coughs> just uh, list various mechanisms of uh, avoiding many-body localization or suppressing many-body localization. Uh, so, <coughs> mm -hmm. so I promised that uh, it would be <laughs> uh, mainly background. Okay, so one is long-range Coulomb interaction. So all, all what I discussed uh, before uh, corresponded to sufficiently uh <coughs> Uh, short-range interaction. So if interaction is long-range, then, for example, in two dimensions, it's Coulomb interaction that would drive the system to delocalization. The um, mechanism is divergence of single particle localization length. So uh, most of the studies of many-body localization uh, <coughs> were performed on, on a system with restricted spectrum, just, just on a lattice, yeah? just chains. Uh, but if you consider a system uh, with unbounded spectrum, then the localization length would, uh, single particle localization length would grow with, the, with, with energy. And this would suppress many body localization or destroy it. Uh, another idea is known in terms of fireball. So mobile hot spots may uh, run over the system according to some theories, but it's not commonly accepted. Uh, now, rare regions I just mentioned, uh, leading to static ergodic spots, leading to avalanches, and leading to delocalization uh, in 2D and shifting 
uh, the localization transition in 1D. Uh, we, we already discussed this. And uh, Ivan Protopopov would uh, discuss the role of symmetries, in particular non-abelian symmetries in many body localization loc uh, in, in, in interacting systems. And it, it turns out that non-abelian symmetry in post-linear system would lead to uh, <coughs> delocalization. Okay. Uh, so I will uh, show you uh, uh, this part on uh, long-range Coulomb interaction. Uh, so many body delocalization by power law interactions. So this is spin Hamiltonian that we considered and uh, as s minus and as z as z terms uh, are characterized by power uh, behavior as a function of distance between the sites. So uh, consider dimension d with uh, exponents alpha and beta and Coulomb would correspond to exponents alpha and beta equal to three. So and then it will describe just dipole-dipole interaction. Hmm? Uh, it's, it may be, uh, so in 1D it's chain, and in 2D it's just uh, a set of uh, spins placed randomly. And uh, the most interesting case uh, is 2D, but in 3D it will definitely delocalize uh, with, with alpha and beta equal 3. Okay. So <coughs> then one can uh, estimate uh, <coughs> the number of resonances of spins. And this is just the Anderson criterion, and this was uh <coughs> elaborated on by Levitov for long range hopping problem. Uh, and uh, with alpha equal three, it's, uh, the number of resonances uh, uh, diverges logarithmically uh, in three dimensions, so everything is localized already, uh, but it turns out uh, it's known from those papers by Burton and others that uh, complexes of two spins uh, uh, may form a, a pseudo spins that are much better connected. So they would form, uh, so uh, you see, uh, you have four levels for uh, for the system, and uh, uh, the two levels can be in resonance. And this enhances the connectivity of the si uh, in, in the graph. Uh, again, this can be, in principle, discussed in terms of localization in Fox phase, uh, in terms of resonances there in, in, in certain graphs. And it turns out that <coughs> for alpha equal beta, many body localization is destroyed by power law interaction if alpha is smaller than 2D. Yeah, so <coughs> this is the line alpha equal beta. And here, the many body localization is destroyed. So when alpha is large, then it's like short range interaction. Then. <coughs> okay. And in particular, dipole dipole, yeah, physical dipole dipole interaction due to electron electron Coulomb interaction responding to alpha equal 3 destroys many body localization in three dimensions and in two dimensions, leading, for example, to <coughs> uh, uh, energy transfers yeah, described by thermal conductivity, which is a power law function of uh, temperature and disorder strength. So these are results for two dimensions and three dimensions. Okay, so I think I, uh, I will <laughs> skip, okay, two minutes. Uh, so I will I will just show some numerical results uh, x x z chain uh, obtained by <coughs> a time dependent variational principle, uh, which allowed us to study much longer chains than uh, available for exact diagonalization, and we believe we controllably studied them. Uh, so uh, this is <coughs> this is the initial state. Uh, up, down, up, down, up, down. And now we switch on disorder and see the evolution of the, look at the evolution of the state, uh, characterizing it by imbalance, like in the experiment on cold uh, atoms. So uh, 
this is weak disorder, this is intermediate disorder, this is strong disorder, and you see that the average uh, imbalance here saturates, and here it's characterized by some power law. These are results for short systems, intermediate systems, and long systems. Uh, and you see that uh, the, <coughs> uh, the localization threshold, so we can, consi uh, we can compare the imbalance with, the, with that for, for the non-interacting Anderson curve. So when, when, when the curve crosses the Anderson curve, non-interacting, we, we declare that it's localization uh, transition. Uh, so you see for small systems, uh, the threshold is somewhere here, yeah, around four, within error, error bars. And for larger systems, we have a saturation with, saturation with L, and importantly, uh, the threshold moves to the right with increasing the system size. And we, uh, in this work, we, we, we see that numerically, we see that uh, the threshold is moved by a factor of almost two from, from three to, uh, to, to, to six. Uh, and <coughs> this is in line with what we s know f uh, from, uh, from the behavior of the threshold uh, in, uh, uh, say, the random regular classes. Uh, Constantine will discuss. Okay, so uh, I will stop here, and this is a summary of my talk. If you are interested, I can uh, discuss privately in private other 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 topics. Thank you for your attention.